Hey guys, Nate Rebel Liners here with my Wolfpack Cherokee Platinum 36516. And what do you think I'm dealing with? I'm dealing with problems with the fridge. 12 volt fridge, and it's never seemed to have worked right. We'll talk more about it here as uh, we get into the camper. Alright, guys, here we are in my 36516 Wolfpack Cherokee. Platinum, and what am I dealing with? The Furion 12 volt fridge. And I did buy this camper used. It was used three times before me. I've used it once, it worked the first time I used it. Since I've been home, it hasn't worked. So I have read all these blogs, watched all these other YouTubes, all this information that they claim. I've been in contact with Furion. Um, my door also drives me crazy, it doesn't quite work right. But um, that is the model number. Let me get that focused in for you here. Right there. Model number FCR 10DCDTA. They have replaced it with the model number GTA for the record. Furion told me that direct. What I want you to see is it turns on. I shouldn't say it turns on. The light is on fine. If I go turn the control on, I want you to listen. You can hear it running. And then, you see the lights flickering? It'll shut right off in a minute. Okay? It'll now do that about every five minutes. And in three days, it might go down 10 degrees. I don't know if it's because I'm not hooked up to a 50 amp service because the old owner also told me every time it worked they were always hooked up to a 50 amp service but when we come home and plug it into our 110 20 amp I'm thinking it don't get enough juice now according to the specs that shouldn't matter because the batteries are at full power which I tested on my 13.7 currently at my batteries why will this fridge not work everyone's talking about the fuse on the back I find it hard to believe that that fuse is not working for me because you just heard the motor kick on. And I can do that about every time if I turn it off and turn it back on. Let's see if it does it again here. See the lights flickering? I don't know if you can hear it. But it is running. And typically, it's going to shut right off. And you can even see the lights on the camper are flickering. So it's time to figure out what gauge wire they got running through this, because I've heard that's one of the issues. And time to see what's going on with the fuse on the backside. I've had enough of dealing with Furion Direct and dealing with Forest River. Furion has sent this sheet that they want filled out by a dealer. Dealer name, blah, 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 blah. Does the compressor run? They want to know what amps, everything that's running. I'll read that to you in a little bit. And here is the original owner's manual, which we'll talk about here shortly. So, to remove the fridge, four Phillips screws on the top. Two Phillips screws on this bottom plastic bezel. And four screws Phillips across the bottom one of those Harper Freight heavy duty moving blankets so we don't damage anything. $8 on sale at the good old Harper Freight. Well, I thought I was lucky because I see in the video some of these fridges where people sit two, three foot off the ground. Mine sat flush. I did marble the wood a little bit. Open the plastic piece covers it when the fridge is in. We're now going to remove the back um, Phillips screws that you see. So we're in there. Not gonna lie, I don't know if you can even see it in this video, but this fridge has seen some moisture, probably normal, but I'm not thrilled about it. You can see the white residue. Um, I was hoping to see it in a better condition than this, considering it's only been used a year, two months. Um, I found the dreadful fuse that everyone talks about. It's right here, and I'm gonna test the continuity in that. Alright, so interestingly enough, I changed this inline fuse. The fuse tested fine, I'll show you in a minute. 
I still get some flickering, but this is the longest this fan has actually stayed on. And I'm dumbfounded by it. I don't know what this fuse could have had to have done with that fan. But it's actually staying on. I now realize that all the noise I've been hearing isn't the compressor. It's this little box fan. It's, it's pretty much the same thing you find in a computer. I can see why people add fans. Um, I just find that interesting that that fan is actually staying on the longest it has. Um, I guess we'll see what happens, but the fuse has been changed. I'm going to take my readings now. Um, I did do this in line, 15 amp. Better than that piece of crap they had in there. So Let's see what happens here. Okay. Hold it on there. Alright, so real quick, I'm going to show you that this fuse was good. It shows me this fuse is good. So that did test. Alright. So I gotta admit, it wasn't bad, but at the same time it was a nightmare. The nightmare was getting it back in. I have two broken feet at the moment, so getting it back in was kind of miserable uh, by myself. With that being said, I changed that fuse. That fuse was the smallest one that I've seen unless the videos just didn't look the same size, but I did replace that fuse with a regular uh, two blade fuse, enclosed, water sealed. Everything was um, heat shrunk and better than what it was. I could tell you that right now, but that's my specialty, so that's not hard for me to do. On that note, since I replaced it, that fuse, and turned it back on, I don't know if you could hear it or not, but that fan is running and actually staying on since that fuse was replaced. I don't know what this means. The one thing that I do see that's really bothering me is why that fan runs if I turn on my lights over the top here. I don't know if you can see in the video or not, but they flicker a little bit. Almost like there's just not enough fuse. Again, I'm on 110, 20 amps. So I don't know what the answer is. Stay tuned for more. Hopefully we'll have some answers soon. All right, guys, so I have to share this. <laughs> we know I replaced the fuse. Voided the warranty, I'm sure. Ooh. But ambient temperature inside this camper. Okay. I don't know if I can get that to show you, but it's 59, 59 degrees in here. 59.3 to be exact. This fridge hasn't shut off since I did this fuse. The freezer is reading 19, oh, 15 degrees. That's 15 degrees the freezer is reading right now. And the fridge is reading 38 degrees. Well, we're getting more, uh, I might be getting it from the freezer now. Hold one second. Let's shut the freezer. And the fridge we're getting between 38 and 40 degrees, 38, just like I said, okay? It's only been 30 minutes. <laughs> I don't even know what to think right now. I don't know if jarring this whole thing and pulling it out jarred something in it so it's working. I'm on 110 power, 20 amp breaker with the house. I will tell you this, if those lights are on across there, they do flicker a little bit. And I haven't officially tried it again, but to the best of my knowledge, if I unplug the shoreline from my 110, so it's adapter, so it's 50 amp service, and I got it plugged into one of those adapters, into a 110 regular household plug, and do an outlet, the fridge will shut off. And to the best of my knowledge, the fridge should not shut off. It should run on the battery. I'm not an expert. I'm not telling you that that's correct. If you have the right answer, please let me know. 33 minutes, I'm going to let it run. I'm going to check it two hours. But if you know why I unplug this camper, and this camper does have the two battery upgrade, you got to start wondering if somebody did something wrong uh, on the connecting of it. It was a camper facility located in Kentucky that did it. Um, but if you do unplug that 110 shoreline right now, it does shut off. I really wish I had a 50 amp service while I do. I just don't feel like moving the whole camper. I think that's going to be the ultimate test. If I plug a 50 amp service into this 
do the lights stop flickering? And does the fridge run um, with that? I'm sure it will. I want to see if the lights stop flickering. Because it almost seems like there's a power, uh, not enough juice going that way on this slide out. Interestingly enough, the readings that I did get, and I did, I did fill the sheet out as they asked me to. I did fill the sheet out. Um, and interestingly enough, 11.4 was what I was getting on the back of that block. I believe it's like 9.4 or 9.5 um, that it detects it and it shuts it off because there's not enough juice. I'm not getting any kind of readings like that, so not quite adding up, but a little more research to do here. All right, so on Furion's sheet here, um, they want to, let's see, um, They want us to turn this fridge on, and at two hours, they want us to check the temperature. All right, so on the bottom here, you'll see temperature checks. Temp control set to mid-setting. Ambient temperature in the RV, we know what that was. It was the 55 to 56 degrees. Prior to operating, and after two hours. So I'm going to go back and just check those temperatures on the inside quick. So I just turned it on, and we'll see what happens in two hours. Ambient temperature on the inside, 56 degrees on the freezer, and the fridge should also be obviously close to the same, and we're 52 degrees. So now we will do our two hour check, it is currently 4 p.m. Alright, so it is 6 p.m., it's actually 5.51, but close enough, I got a fire department meeting to get to tonight. And our ambient temperature, just for giggles, is uh, 56 here in the camper. And we are going to start with the fridge. And our immediate temperature we get is 40, oh jeez, I'm all over, 16, 32 degrees. So again, it's 6 p.m. And we're around 40 degrees in the fridge. 30, 38, 40. And if we come up to the freezer, our immediate temperature that we're getting is 13 degrees. On the floor is, or the floor of the freezer is 2.0, oh, 1.6. And up top is about 3.9. So um, I would definitely say it's working. Again, the question now is was it the fuse that I replaced? Or was it because I jarred it around and it jarred something that's so it's working? The only thing I could tell you is, and you probably can't hear it on this camera, but if you guys see the dryer sheets all over, it's what I do to winterize it. Um, if I shut this switch off right here, you'll actually hear the tone of the motor increase. Like these lights are drawing too much power. Listen. Again, I don't know if you can hear that or not, but if I turn this on and off, I could definitely hear the draw in that fridge. Again. So, at this point in time, I guess we fixed it. I'm probably not going to know until um, I go on the road and see what happens when I set it up somewhere else. Problem is, I'm getting ready to winterize this. The problem is, it has a month left to the warranty, and I'm not sure what to do at this point. There it is. Empty box. I already loaded it into the camper just to have it out of my way. Nothing would happen to it, so it's sitting in the in the garage portion of the 365 16 Wolf Pack. Um, full replacement. It took five or six months, but it actually came. Uh, real quick, I just want to show you guys. It came without the panels on the front of it. I was really confused. Um, the panels had to be slid out. I've already slid them out of the freezer and refrigerator portion. And I just want to show you how I did that. It came out there in the in the camper. It's got this unfinished type metal, and I'm like, what is it, a dirty stainless? And then I realized the panels need to be slid out. I'm real easy on the freezer section. There is two little um, push piece pulls straight up. Panel for the freezer slides straight up. On the bottom refrigerator portion of this, real simple. Um, 
That's all you got to do. You think you're going to break it, but you're not. It's just pull. It's got a groove, and that'll all pop right out. You can see the channel, and uh, that's all you got to do is just pop it back on. Slide the panel. The, this, this panel slides out, so it slides from the side. And you can see I'm just doing it one hand here, holding the camera, and it just pops back on. Uh, I guess great way to know that you can replace it or custom make something for that if you want to do. And uh, slide it back in and out. Maybe you got dirty, dented. I don't know. Well, it's not hard to come up with something to slide into there. So, so here is the new fridge. I'll show you the other side once I get it in here. Um, sitting in the outdoor garage. Outdoor garage. Well, you know what I mean. Anyways, here's the hole. So it's just some tips and tricks that I came up with. I got this. No results other than me coming up with this. But I had this other fridge in and out so many times. I started to scuff the wood up. Okay. And on a brand new camper, that's uh, that's pretty aggravating. So this beautiful black tape is my design. Um, it is stage tape for like stage. Uh, they, they, they mark things with it on the stage. Um, it's a really heavy kind of fabric tape. And I what I did is is I pretty much had measured about where the marks were and you could see the marks from the existing uh, fridge. You could just see it there. Um, and I put the tape on it, so when the fridge gets shoved back in, um, hopefully it doesn't show the damage. So, there's been a lot of questions about um, what what is the proper gauge. And on Furiums, if I say the wrong name wrong, sorry. But on their tech sheet, they, they ask what gauge wire is feeding this. And it wasn't until a couple days ago that I really noticed that the, 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 the wire, in my opinion, was undersized. Um, on the initial thought that I had because this is this is all that was feeding the fridge and It just so happens it's fancier wire and not all wire has this but it actually says on this wire um, What gauge wire this is and from my discovery? I'm gonna look here quick Confirm because it's been six months since I read it. So bear with me here I tried several times to get this to try to zoom in for you. It's 14 gauge two wire. So obviously two wire, it's 14 gauge though. And I, from what I read online, that that's too small. What I find interesting, the point of this conversation that I was starting here, is they ran double wire. So there's two 14s coming in. Correct, technically four. And then they go to a single wire. So I am going to beef from what I see to do the whole system, it's going to be catastrophic. This goes down to a channel that goes underneath the slide out and you got to trace it all the way. So we, we built cop cars here and in this case, okay, fine. These two wires are coming to it. Uh, we know that the, um, let's see, our ground is going to be on the brown. I lied. The ground is the white. And the hot is our power, and I'll show you how I know that in a second. And then we start playing with AC, DC. Uh, we know these are pretty much, these fridges are pretty much designed to run right off a 12 volt a battery, a car battery, or deep cell, or deep cycle. All right. So my point is, is it's got two 14 gauge wires for the power, two 14 gauge wires for the ground. And then it goes to a single to the fridge. I'm just going to step the wire up a gauge. And uh, I shouldn't say a gauge. So probably what the whole thing should be. And I'm going to feed it, okay, with um, 10 gauge. And from what I read, 10 gauge is what they're recommending. But you can see the difference here in size. And we're just going to take the two wire to a 10 gauge, okay, and then the other two wires to the other 10 gauge. So I have two different colors here. I've got yellow. I've got red. I've got a blue, so I'm going to figure out what color I'm going to use here, and I'm just going to, to uh, beef that up directly to the fridge. It's going to make me feel better. Is it going to mean anything? I don't know, but we know we got two 14s going to our hot, two 14s going to our ground, uh, and then it goes to a 14. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. And I started wondering if this fridge was capable of knowing if it was AC, DC. It doesn't. It has nothing to do with it. Okay? Individually, each one of those wires tests the same. Um, it's if I unplug the camper right now, it's off the battery. It's still hot on each wire. If I plug the camper in, it's still hot. If I turn it, it doesn't matter. Okay, there's two hot wires and there's two grounds coming in. 
Now, in the back of this fridge, the other unit had a fancy little box in it. That's all the that fancy little box did, and I could show you, is it just tied in the powers and the grounds, okay? Or I should say the two grounds together. So right on this sticker, it's pretty easy, it's labeled, okay? Um, the red is our positive, the white is our ground, or negative, and the green reads ground. So on that fancy little box that they had mounted on the back of this thing, that's all it did was tie in the, the two grounds together. Um, you don't really need to do it like that, but I did take the box out and we could put the box back in. And I'll show that here shortly. So, this project at this point, um, I, like I said, I came in here and I just took my regular fancy test light. It really ain't that fancy. It does show how much juice and it does give me a reading. But if I take my, my ground on my test light here and I connect it there, and I take my probe, okay? This is real fancy, because this thing will test, um, this is snap on you, this will test positive and negative. 13.2 volts. That's pretty good. That's what's coming to this camper, 13.2 volts. If I was to reverse this test light, and take my clamp to the hot wire, and I put my probe in on my ground side, it will be green, and it will tell me that that's a ground. Well, isn't this interesting? Guess what? It ain't two powers feeding this fridge. I just cut the powers. So I was going to splice in my heavy gauge wire like I told you. And guess what just happened? Oh, the lights up top shut off. I don't know if I ever showed it in my original videos and I was having fridge problems. But when the fridge would try to run, these lights would flicker. Well, look at that. Those lights were flickering because they're using the same power. Now, mind you, there's one, two, three, four, five LED lights. They probably ain't drawing a whole lot. But I can tell you right now, not impressed. That's freaking ridiculous that that's not on a different circuit. Or a different fusible link. Um, I think I originally located it where the battery is. There's a fuse there. I, I just don't even know what to think right now. So, my whole theory that there were two positives coming to it and there were two negatives... Uh, I was wrong, so I just want to let you guys know. Now I'm seriously uh, saying to myself, why am I going to put a heavier gauge wire to it? And I don't think it's really going to matter. Um, I'm going to give it some thought for a couple minutes here. So my buddy just said, are you going to edit that whole thing out with making the wire bigger? And you were wrong? No, I'm not going to edit it out. It's the truth. It happened. There's no point of using the bigger wire. I was wrong. There's not two powers feed it. It's running them stupid lights up there, which now totally explains the flickering of those lights with the bad fridge. Um, with that being said, uh, I'm not going to run bigger gauge wire off, off off this point. It makes no sense. The only way to do it would be to run it complete all the way. And, you know, unless I still keep seeing, if I see flickering lights, I'm going to lose it. And I, I probably will take the painstaking hours it's going to take to trace this down and rerun the bigger gauge wire in this fridge. But, probably don't have to. I'm assuming that there's a million of these campers out there like that. So, um, what I did is I connected them back up. You could tell I'm an automotive guy because <laughs> I used heat shrink. Um, I'm not big on those um, twist crimpers. Um, they're both done up. I'll also tape them and it's over with. So, back to the drawing board. Um, I'm going to get ready to put this fridge in, I guess. So, the fridge that was taken out, there are some different things that I've noticed are different. So, there's no doubt this fridge has been redesigned. And I'm not just talking about the power. Um, just some stuff that I've noticed on the back side, underneath. Um, with that being said, this box right here was in the old one. It's real simple. It's just a pass-through lock. So, in other words, whatever you connect here is going to come out of here. Whatever you connect here will come out of here, vice versa. Okay? Because there's three wires, we would go positive, our red here, and then our trailer positive here. Up here, we would go our ground wire, ground wire, and then we could do a jumper or, or whatever, or just put them together in the same block. All this is for is honestly getting it out easily. You can see the existing holes are even there to install this little piece. So I suppose we could, we could reuse it. Um, you don't have to, and trust me, it's crossed my mind that maybe I'll just 
you shrink and wire them together and be done with it. It's not even dealing with this stupid box. Um, but that's what it looked like. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that is what it looked like on the old, the old fridge. And that's all they were doing is just jumping that wire for the two grounds. So, pretty simple, stupid. We're gonna get that wired up and see what happens here. And it's running. It started right away. I can't find a breaker that shuts this off. Only way you'd be able to kill the power. So you, you notice I had that one heat shrink connector on the power one. That was just so I didn't arc it out on something. And I cut it when I was ready to be safe. I originally took some uh, electrical tape and covered all the metal around it so I didn't short anything out. But my ground, going to the two grounds, power to the fridge, power coming in. That's really it. Started right away. The old fridge never did that. So, it's got to be a positive ready, and I've got no lights flickering. I don't know if you can see this or not, but it's just a sticky tab with a zip tie. Holds this wire up out of the way, so when I go push this back in, it doesn't get pinched on something or cut open. So, I also brought the panels out. They're that simple. Um, they're dang near made of like a cardboard corrugated. Um, metal glue them or whatever type it is where you can see the corrugation on the back side and then it's just a layer that ain't much to it and the doors came on this one set up the opposite way to the old one which is all reversible just like any fridge or you buy a house you could change it and the only other big notice I made was the new fridge came with all uh, like a glass shelving the other one's got the old school um, original, like the graded metal, like a grill that eventually rusts. So, kind of happy that that did come like that. Same thing with the, the freezer. And the freezer and the other one, um, it's not solid. It's all corrugated. So, rather interesting. Or graded, I should say. Alright, we're going to get this in the hole. Like I said, the top panel slides in from the top. I also took advantage of I washed them while they were out. Gave them a good cleaning. So obviously not brand new. Piece slides in like so. Real simple. There's no screws or anything involved with it. Um, the top piece just snaps right in. Anything else in a camper and make it as cheap as possible, I think, sometimes. But hey, it works. Uh, it should just pop in here. Just like that. Alright. There's your top piece, and like I said, so all you gotta do is if you feel like you're gonna break it, it just pulls right off. There's there's really nothing to it. And your Bridge panel will just go right in the track, like so. Want to make sure it gets in the groove on the other side of the door. There it is. It just slides like that, and then you just take your channel back, and you can see the groove section where it's going to go into the panel. And get it started. Persuasion. And, huh. Real quick for the people asking, uh, there's four screws on the top of the freezer. If you open the door, you'll see them. And there's four screws at the bottom of the fridge. And if you open the door, you'll see them. That's all that holds this entire unit in. <laughs> it's almost hard to believe. I'm going to tell you right now guys are going to be really happy that I wasn't recording when I had to put this thing in because I it was terrible um, one person there's a couple bolts or screw heads that peed out the bottom and it was a nightmare to get that in there myself I had a solid 25 minutes and the fighting that thing back into the hole um, it was terrible <laughs> I hope to not have to do that again 
Uh, fingers crossed for sure. All right, I left the doors open on this fridge for about an hour, just making sure the fridge got the room temperature while it was off. Um, the outside temperature here in Western New York today is a wonderful 52.3 degrees at two in the morning. And inside our uh, freezer here, we are 64.4. And in our fridge, we're actually 68 degrees in the fridge portion. So I don't think that's focusing right on that. I apologize. I, I really need some new camera equipment. So 64.4. In the freezer and 68.2 in the fridge we are going to come here and put this on the center setting and it fired up and my lights aren't flickering um, the fridge one is but that's normal I think the lights aren't flickering up top here like they used to do so I'm already happy all right it's been about 20, 25 minutes probably. And we are going to check the temperature and see if we have made any progress here. So we'll grab the thermometer. I actually got the electric heater on in here. And we are wonderful. 65.5 degrees, 67 at the ceiling, 64 at the floor. We're going to open the freezer up and take a temperature right away. And we are down to 44.4 degrees. 43 in the bottom. Oh, we're getting actually ratings around 8.9 degrees um, down below. There must be an element. Yep. Oh, yeah. It's super cold to the touch. Well, that's great. 12 degrees. So that's great. She's definitely working. And then we'll open the fridge. In the fridge, we are uh, 66 range, 64 in some areas. So, I would say the initial test, that's cool one. We're going to let her go overnight, see what it does here in the morning. So, it's been seven hours since I, uh, I put the fridge back in. And here are our temperatures. 6.3 degrees, 10.5 degrees, I don't know if you guys can see it or not, <clears throat> so uh, the freezer's definitely working, and come down below, and we immediately get 34 degrees, 35 on the bottom, sides are still reading 35, so We've got a fridge again. How long it works, that's yet to be found. But hey, at least they sent me one. Uh, hopefully the footage helped you with something. And if it didn't, well, we guess move on. Until we meet again, Nate from Rebel Liners. Thanks. Hey guys, Nate, Rebel Liners. Um, got my beautiful 2020 Wolfpack. 65, 16. Don't mind the dog. 